Welcome to 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, your host, broadcasting live from Tulum, Mexico. Um, on the, yesterday was the first day of the spring. It was the uh, Persian, uh, Iranian uh, New Year, uh, late on the 19th, early 20th. So the turn, the new year, the Persian year started it, um, <clears throat> which starts with the first day of spring. Anyway, uh, just want to say happy new year to all the uh, uh, Persian brothers, sisters I have from all over the world who celebrate no roots. It's called no roots, new day. Anyway, so. Today, we're going to be talking about, uh, which one of my uh, good friends brought it up, uh, to be a lion, walk like a lion, act like a lion. And uh, I very clearly remember my guru, Papaji, back in the day, used to tell us, walk like a lion or walk like a lioness. So, and what he meant was when you're a lion, a lion doesn't follow anybody's path. Wherever the lion goes, cuts his own path. So, so the lion is, Run, you know, walking around, running around the jungle, loose, and wherever, wherever path it chooses to go through, that is a new path that is generated. So, and what he was talking about, and what we're talking about today, is that you remain truth true to yourself and you follow the truth of who you are. And following the truth of who you are could be at times very scary, but in the meantime, it's very liberating. And you are sticking to your own truth. You are following your heart. And by sticking to your own truth and following your own heart, there's a power to it that this power is coming from this part of you rather than this part of you. And since you are doing what you really want to do and what feels very right for you, and we call it follow your heart, is the pathway opens up. And you become like a bulldozer, like you're cutting through the jungle, through the forest, and you're creating a brand new path of your own. And in that, so there may be other people following you, or there may not, but there's definitely in the beginning a lot of resistance because uh, you're going your own way. But in the meantime, the people or others begin to respect you uh, after they resist you. So, and anyone who's done this, or at least partially done it in their lives, they understand what, what I'm talking about, of that how uh, this resistance turns into respect. It's very, very, um, most of us in this life, we uh, do without even knowing, unconsciously. Unconsciously, we're our followers. We're following other people. We're following the trend, the fashion, in whichever way it is, whether it's the fashion regarding our clothing, uh, regarding hairstyle, um, the type of food we eat, the uh, type of car we drive, 
the lifestyle we're having, um, we're following the trends. <clears throat> and then some of us are not even aware of doing it. And we have a hard time walking our own truth and doing what we really truly want to do is because we're the fear of being mocked or the fear of uh, look looked down upon or criticism, which anytime you're going to do your own thing you and walk a different path than the herd, you're going to be criticized and you're going to be encountering a lot of resistance. Or you may even get punished for it. Uh, it depends on the severity uh, of what you're doing and uh, how much what you're doing is against the norm or the general public mentality. And so as Hilda, my sister, brought it up earlier today, um, what happens is she, she mentioned the more silent I am, the more quiet I am, the more rebellious I become. <clears throat> and that's an interesting observation and statement because <clears throat> there's power into being silent and you're quiet. <clears throat> You're in your own truth and you're getting away from the mind, which tells you don't do this, don't do that, or you should be like this, or you should be like that. And you're getting out of that. And as you're getting out of it, you're coming to this place within yourself. You're sinking into this other aspect of yourself. And in sinking into this other part of yourself, because the mind is not there and it's quiet, you begin to discover a, um, a new you. You begin to discover your courage and discovering parts of yourself that you did not, you didn't know it does, it exists. This power that you have, you, you have no idea how enormous it is and that it does exist because it's been covered up most of your life by morality or do's or don't do's, by what society or your parents are telling you, no, don't do this, be a good girl do this or do that, and this is not appropriate what you're doing, you should be doing this, you shouldn't be living like this or living like that. And now you're coming to the truth of who you are and you're discovering this power within yourself. And so, and this goes into different levels. I mean, there's stages in the entire um, discovery, the self-discovery. And first is by becoming quiet in the first stage. You have somehow isolated yourself from the herd because the herd is basically, it's very comfortable to be a part of the herd. It's robotic. It requires no thinking. Uh, all you have to do is follow. All you have to do is laugh when everybody else is laughing, cry when they're crying, and talk about nonsense and blah, blah, blah of life and fill out the space with a lot of words. Because if you're quiet, it becomes uncomfortable. So you have to fill out the space with words. So there is no uncomfortableness here. 
So when you become quiet, that is the first stage into this journey of slowly, slowly, you're becoming quiet. And in this endeavor, you're separating yourself from the herd. So that's first stage of it. Then you enter eventually into the second stage. And the second stage is that you begin to recognize that in this shift that, that you've been a part of is A, you are experiencing resistance. There's going to be tremendous amount of resistance because you're waking up to the truth of who you are. And as a part of the truth of who you are is that you're not going to participate into this robotic behavior and reactions. And you're resisting that. And you want to do your own thing. And your friends, family, society is going to put you under a lot of pressure. Whether you change the way you dress, maybe you change your hairstyle, maybe it's just the way you are. Um, whatever that is, is what you say, how you're viewing the world, and also the fact that you have an overcoming your fears and anxieties because you're being quiet and you're not participating into the affairs of the world. So now people coming to you and telling you what's wrong or why you're behaving this way, what's going on with you, uh, whatever that is. And I'm sure any of you who have gone through this path have experienced this. There's no way out of it. So the second stage you're gonna go through is is going to be resistance. You're going to experience resistance. And then when you go through that, and if you stay on course, then you're going to, and you know, all these parts I could talk about, you know, I can have long conversations about it and get into it and talk about, talk about them in, in hours. And so, but, Excuse me, one moment. I'm trying to get my right, uh, my electricity and my computer is kind of like not cooperating. Huh. Okay, what happened here? Anyway, okay, it's not happening. So, and uh, after this stage that you're experiencing the resistance, then comes that you begin to enter into uh, because as my friend uh, mentioned earlier, that the more I stay in silence and the, the more I follow my own heart, the more rebellious I become. So, uh, and that's why silence is dangerous to the establishment. At least the, that kind of silence we're talking about, because they don't want you to be quiet. They want you to be busy in your head. Because if you're busy in your head, you remain a robot. If you become quiet, then you begin to wake up because you start to see the truth of who you are and you begin to realize that you no longer want to partake of robotic behaviors and you want to be your own person and you want to walk your own path and you no longer need to follow anybody else and you don't no longer need to be like everybody else because you're you are your own person and whatever that is Whatever being your own person means, 
you, you become that. And then in recognizing it and falling into it, power, power comes. You tab into your internal power. You tab into this mighty presence, which is right here. You know, it's right behind you, standing there. It's surrounding you. And you're starting to recognize it. Because as an individual, as one person, you know, you, it's very easy to feel very insignificant. It's like, I'm nothing. I don't have any power. Uh, there's nothing I can do. The system is way bigger than me. And I have such a short lifespan before I come to myself. My life is over and I'm going to die or I'm sick. Or I'm going through all kinds of health issues. And when you do start to come into this space within yourself and you start to discover your own freedom outside of the ideas of the society, outside of the ideas of our conditioning ideas, how we should be and also getting over a lot of our addictions and getting over our loneliness and, and uh, dependency, because that is also a major uh, liberation, a part of our liberation that we, begin, we become independent. This independence, it brings you power. You start to really discover your the power that is here. Now, when I say you come to your power, I'm not talking about a personal power. I'm not talking about power in, to manipulate other people or to, to really just, it, I'm not talking about an egoic, egoic part of it, like I get whatever I want. I'm not referring to that. And it's very easily mistaken as that. No, I'm, what I'm referring to is the liberation, the freedom you begin to experience that you're no longer a sheep and you're no longer limited and small and in in insignificant. Actually, you begin to recognize your higher level, higher state, your godly less. Godly, God, God-like that how tremendous and vast you are in connecting to the truth of who you are, which is not a human being and separated and, and, and uh, helpless. It's beyond a human being because the human being is needy. The person is needy, it's lonely, it gets sick, it's very fragile, it's very easily, you can break it or bend it. But this other part of yourself is beyond that. So what happens is in the third stage, you begin to recognize it. And in that recognition, there is no way back. You can't go back to sleep. You can't fall asleep again. You are going to remain and, and be a part of this because you, 
you have awakened. And now you realize that you can walk your own path. And you realize how much of a robot you've been up to this point. And you don't want, you refuse to be a robot now. You're going to walk your own path. And the more you do that, the more liberated you feel and the more protected you feel, even though you're going to be encountering resistance, but you feel free. Because the mind is quiet because you've gone beyond the chatter of the mind, you've gone beyond the fears and worries and limitations that the mind putting on you. And it's not necessarily, it's not an easy way. It's very scary and it's it could be very frightening and it's got a lot of ups and downs to it. It's got a lot of turns and twists to it. Because a part of the training that you're going to go through, which it's also directed and, and kind of designed for your spiritual growth by your own sat guru, by your own inner guru. And you get tested to encounter different fears in different times, whether it's financial fear or it's the fear of loneliness, fear of getting old, fear of getting sick, fear of death, fear of not want being wanted. And there are different stages that in this endeavor you have to go through. And each stage is like graduation. So that's where it becomes really handy to be able to check in with some sort of system, whether it's your teacher, or whatever way you can check in to see where am I and how am I doing. So being able to have something, some sort of um, system that you can measure where you're at because we can easily get discouraged and uh, get frightened and panicky. So, but once the this whole thing is activated, it's, there's no way out of it. You can't get out of it. You can't go back. There's no going back. And of course, sometimes we think to ourselves that ignorance, ignorance is bliss. Like sometimes you think to yourself, like, I wish I wasn't awakened or waking up and I wish I was like everybody else. But now it's too late. <clears throat> so existence is going to push you and force you to walk your own path. And as you walk your own path, you create, it's like being a lion, you creating a brand new trail that others can follow. <clears throat> Mm 
Anybody has any questions or comments? So the lion way is the divine way. Yes. Yeah, it's it, the lion's way is the 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 way the path to liberation. Mm -hmm. To freedom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because <clears throat> look, it's very easy to fall asleep into the idea of everybody, every most people around you, okay? Now, I, I don't, I, I'm assuming this is a generalized uh, statement, okay? Most of us, that are on this path or us here in the academy that we're on this path 95 percent or more 99 percent of our family and friends people who are around us they're in the world they they they're not on the same path as you are so their conversations is worldly Things is about world, okay? And the world's objects and materials. So talking about buying more real estate, talking mm -hmm. about uh, making more money, talking about having family and kids, uh, what's going on in the world. A lot of, especially in Europe right now, a lot of blah, 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 a lot of fear about the politics. A lot of stories and fear about future, um, what's gonna happen in the future? Am I gonna get enough oil or gas or what's gonna happen to me or what's gonna happen to us? A lot of stories like that. So, and for the ordinary person, these stories are very real. The world is very real. <laughs> so it really occupies their mind and it really creates a lot of fear or a lot of desire or a lot of blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Monica, just one moment. Let me finish up and then we talk. And in this, um, so there's a lot of worldly conversations. No, this is just short. Uh, do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes. Uh, what you have said tonight is just the right thing for me. And I have begun, so if you met me again, you wouldn't recognize me because I'm not so very nice and, and polite and things like that. I'm more myself and say what I, I feel, even if right. people doesn't like it. Right. So it was just a, a comment. And yeah. I, thank you very much. But yeah. it, was, it was just this day I needed to hear this. Because today I have l done lots of things I had never done before uh, yeah. against people who want to, to decide for, for me. I have told them, no, I'm going to do what I have decided to do. I'm not going to do what you ask me to. I think that's wrong. And I ne never dared to say so to people before, but now, now I have really said. And when yeah, you said. do say this, you speak your truth, how does it feel? Does it feel good? good? good. I feel good and feel, but a bit 
scare to was that really right to say to that person maybe she will punish punish me but but I don't care uh, I, I think uh, well she was wrong and I I was right <laughs> I, I have to tell you right yeah beautiful very yes. very nice to hear that <laughs> thank you <laughs> Yes, that's, <laughs> I'm so proud of myself for that. Yes, <laughs> and you feel the power because yes. you're, speaking, I, you're I, speaking your own truth and you're doing what really feels right for you in comparison to the past. Yes. That, yes. you know, you, you would do all the things that you were expected to do. Yes. And uh, in order and, to keep everybody else happy. Yes, and, and uh, a bit afraid of get into conflicts. Now yeah. I don't bother conflicts. Yeah. Yes. If it's uh, really uh, in, uh, important things, of course, then I can be nice and <laughs> social. <laughs> but uh, people would not recognize me who hasn't uh, seen me on on the time because I've gone gone, gone uh, through a bad time with band who has been uh, ill and I have helped him and now right. everything is well right at the moment yes, yes. Mm. thank you thank you for sharing Monica thank you yeah, nice seeing you here at the Academy yes. again. Yeah. So <clears throat> back to, yeah, I mean, uh, in regards to this topic we're talking about is, as you can see, it's a development. It's something that starts to develop within us. And and it's a it's a major difference maker in the quality of the life we have. The quality. And it, I'm not talking about quantity. This doesn't necessarily is going to make me richer. It's not going to necessarily give me more life to live, or it's not necessarily going to give me any power to manipulate things or get what my mind wants. But it definitely makes my life richer. Hmm. As far as the quality of my life goes. Hill, do you have anything to say? You wanted to say something? Yeah, thank you for talking about this, you know. And I feel that I don't take bullshit anymore. You know, that I'm just blah, 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 yeah. and I'm just... I don't take bullshit anymore, BS. Pressure. No, BS, Oops. bullshit. Oh, bullshit. Bullshit, yeah. Yeah. So I am still kind, but, you know, I don't want to use my energy for all that stuff again, you know? Yeah. So, and it's quite funny because uh, I'm not uh, unfriend people or whatever, but many of them haven't been talking to me for a while and I don't miss them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so they just disappear and all the people just come away. Yeah. 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 Right. It's you know what happens it's like season seasonal cleaning up or it's kind of like that's what nature does. Every yeah. once in a while you're going to have a storm. And all these leaves that they're they've dried up and they're still hanging on on a tree or the branches 
stuff that are not necessarily, they need to be cleaned up. And the nature will create a storm. And, you know, you see the leaves, they all fall. You know, some parts of some branches, they, they break. And so whatever is heavy and is unnecessarily to stay on a tree, it's, or it's going to, you know, nature gets rid of it. Or maybe there's a fire or something. So it's just going to clean up. The ones that are supposed to go, they go. The ones that are supposed to stay, they stay. And the yeah, same... that was a beautiful picture. Yeah, and the same thing with our relationships that existence creates a some sort of a storm and gets rid of whatever which is no longer necessary and needed <laughs> needs to go. And, yeah. and that's the and same I, for people. And I feel uh, within my body as well that uh, a lot of blockages is gone, you know? And then my my body feels so good. I become more and more free and more and more, more and more healthy, you know? And of course I met the uh, blockages and everything, but after I, they have gone through me, I feel so great. You know, so this year I had, had uh, arthritis for 50 years, you know? And I'm mm -hmm. so proud of that because people are telling me, oh my God, how will you manage that? You know, but I feel younger and younger. So this is just fun, huh? Well, you're doing a good job. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. And you've been kicking my ass for 10 years, you know? So I'm proud of you too. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that been easy where for you, you to be my spiritual teacher all the way. I know that. <laughs> We're in kicking ass business. Yes, of course. <laughs> so thank you, my friend. You've done a very good job. You're welcome, my dear sister. You're welcome. <laughs> so as we're just hanging out together here, you know, just just relax. And as you are without doing anything extra, just kind of feel the presence. Just kind of feel your being, feel what's here right now. The, what is here right now? If you just relax into yourself, what do you find here? What is it that is always here and it doesn't come and it doesn't go? Kind of just relax into yourself and here, this moment. And suddenly you tap into your being. the power of now, the power of the being, the presence, that which is here. And kind of like stay into it, stay with it.
And you can see in the absence of the mind, when you easily go beyond the mind, the presence takes over. So there is like this vast ocean of calmness and life, love, which is here. It's always here and it's accessible, but the mind flutters it. So the moment you're able to just simply shift from the head to the heart, all of a sudden you tap into your own wealth. Your own wealth. Which is the power of being. That you are that. So you recognize these other, this other part of yourself, which is not a human being, has a story. It's a vastness and it's the presence. This, this part of yourself, which is always here, which doesn't come and go. Because you may be thinking, oh wow, Zarathustra, I went into this amazing place, but now it's gone. No, you're making a mistake. It doesn't come and go. It's not gone. It's here. What, what clutters it and you don't see it is because your thinking mind came back. The bliss and the presence didn't go away. It's always here. You're going to talk about this when you come to Hamar in May, uh, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, we're going to get into it. Nice and deep. But this, the juice, the love, the presence, this, what you're, you're, are in right now and you're just feeling it like, wow, this so calm, so relaxed, so amazing. This is always here. It doesn't come and go. It's the mind that comes and goes. So we are identifying with the, the wrong part. We're identifying with that which, with what comes and goes. And we think what comes and goes is real. Instead, of really identifying with the other, this other part, which doesn't come and go, it's always here. Go ahead. Yeah, I love it. Yes, this is, um, I really love this. And uh, you have really taught me this to identify with the observer instead of what is being observed and i'm so grateful for that and uh, you have really taught me to connect with source and the silence and it's it's yeah i'm just so grateful for this thank you thank you thank you and you know i've been going to so many different um uh, teachers and healers and all of this and they have taught me so many uh, magnificent uh, tools right but this that you teach to become quiet so that i'm uh, able to be a conduit that that's 
that's like it's like the main key it's re it really is and i'm so grateful for this and also you know everyone they say like that we go and look outside but the key is in the heart but uh, from you i have uh, realized it in a way so that it's it's like I don't only get I, I'm not only getting it with my head it is like I'm embodying it and and you are the one who have like opened that for me and I'm so grateful for that I'm so grateful for that thank you thank you thank you thank you wow. yeah yeah You're welcome. I'm, <laughs> that brings a lot of joy in my heart when I hear that. And it's the its beauty is it's has no <laughs> it doesn't matter we have time difference we're in different countries it there is no limit to it and it's instant so regardless that we're diff in different countries with different time zones it just the moment you connect to it, it just immediately transfers. Can I say something more? Yeah, sure. Yes, and also, it, I remember you, you, you said, you used to say like, the more you re relax into it, If you can relax into it, and um, it's like, I remember you used to say like, so you mean that I can just relax and uh, existence will bring food to you? Existence will bring everything you need? And I was like, hmm, is this, is this really true? Mm -hmm. And it is really true. It's challenging for me to 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 be relaxed sometimes because there's so many things happening. But, but it's really, really magic, magical. Everything I need is being provided to me. It's it's really magical. And the the way it, it comes through my family and my friends, and it, it's just magical. It just comes to me. Everything I need. It's 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 amazing. So yeah. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for this. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, Papaji always used to say, uh, the apparent life takes care of itself. The apparent life, the life that appears to be real takes care of itself. So yeah, everything does come to you in a very magical way. It's, it's very difficult to explain it, but it does come to you. Well, my uh, brothers, sisters, it's nice seeing you all. Um, As some of you know, those who are new with us for the first time or they're viewing uh, this broadcast, are uh, going to be having a series of events and workshops in uh, Poland and Norway in, and in mid-May. Uh, so feel free and reach out. Uh, you may want to check my website, which is azaratustra.tv or directly co connect with our organizers, uh, Hilde Evenstad and Wudek, Hilde in Norway and Wudek in Poland. Uh, those are the two events we're having in this coming mid-May. And then I'm having a, a retreat in, in uh, 
uh, Poland that's going to be in August, which is a healing training program. My website is zaratustra.tv and my social media is uh, zaratustra 5 d And if you want to connect with us, please send us an email at info at zaratustra.tv. Uh, I also have a program called Life Training Program, and you're welcome to contact me. It's a private training program. It's a one-on-one -on -one private training program. In case if you want to get information, you're welcome to contact me uh, or contact Hilde. Yeah, our next academy is going to be next Thursday at the same time. I, I thank you for joining me, and I look forward to connecting with you. And also a copy of this broadcast will be uh, emailed to you. Namaste.